What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, two time, two division world champion, current WBA lightweight superstar boxer, Javante Tank Davis, responds to Oscar De La Hoya, former Hall of Fame boxer turned promoter and promoter of Golden Boy Promotions. Oscar De La Hoya did a radio show in which he brought up Javante Tank Davis as a possible opponent for his undefeated lightweight rising superstar, Ryan King Rod Garcia, right? Um, Oscar De La Hoya said this on the radio show. He said it would be a great fight. It's no need to wait. He believes they're both ready. Uh, he said that at one point he was asked, he said that, you know, um, at one point you said that you wouldn't put Ryan Garcia in the ring with Javante Tank Davis because he was an animal. And Oscar De La Hoya responded and said, absolutely. He said, um, but I believe that Ryan Garcia has blossomed at this point in time, at this current time. Um, he's grown. And after his next fight with former world champion Jorge Linares, who's a very tricky, very fast, very high, ring high IQ uh, uh, um, veteran, he says that, you know, he's going to gain and garner even more experience. So he believes that he's ready. The time is, is right, right? Uh, um, also, too, you know, um, I believe that Oscar De La Hoya feels like Javante Tank Davis is right for the picking, right? He mentioned something about the Gamboa fight, you know, not being able to finish Gamboa. Uh, I was with Ryan Garcia's dad. I did an interview with him in which he said that he believes that the fight is going to take place in December. Well, it seems as if Javante Tank Davis has caught wind of this. And he said, why are we waiting? Right? Oscar De La Hoya stated that this could be the part two of me and Floyd. This could be Oscar De La Hoya versus Floyd Mayweather the part two. Uh, Ryan, uh, Javante Tank Davis has got wind of this. And Javante Tank Davis stated that, why are we waiting? Make it happen. Yeah, it definitely could be Floyd and Oscar part two. But I'm not going to be Money Mayweather. I'm going to be Pretty Boy Floyd. And I'm going to be far more dangerous. So there's no need to wait. Let's just make it happen. Now, one thing I have to say about him saying, why we waiting, let's just make it happen is, uh, Javante Tank Davis know it can't happen right now and it's not going to happen next because he's already scheduled to face Leo Santa Cruz, who's a four division Mexican superstar boxer, world champion in his own right, who only has one defeat on his resume that came at the hands of Carl Frampton, who was a, a British UK star and a champion in his own right. And then Leo Santa Cruz avenged that. So, uh, it seems like that's on the verge of taking place, uh, um, in the end of May, um, and possibly early June. So he knows he's not going to be available to make that fight happen uh, uh, anytime soon. But this is why Ryan Garcia's father stated that he believes it's going to happen in December. Now, I'm of the mindset if Leo Santa Cruz um, and Javante Tank Davis takes place in May, you know, uh, June, then this fight could take place earlier than December. Especially if King Ryan, Ryan Garcia, I believe that fight is going to be scheduled for some time in June uh, um, in its own right. I believe Oscar De La Hoya said he already had that, um, venue, you know, um, locked in and secured, you know, um, um, for June or July, if I'm not mistaken, for Jorge Linares versus Ryan Garcia. So this fight could happen earlier than December. Um, Ryan Garcia's father said that Ryan Garcia is going to go seek out, you know, uh, it's not a sure thing that it's going to be Jorge Linares. You know, um, it's a possibility it could be Luke Campbell. Um, Luke Campbell is going to face, uh, it's going to be Jorge Linares because Luke Campbell is going to go the route of facing, uh, um, H Javier Fortuna for the vacant WBC belt that the WBC decided to strip, uh, Devin Haney of another undefeated superstar boxer, lightweight. He, they decided to strip Devin Haney after he had an injury. They couldn't even wait you know, and allow him to, you know, recover. They, they stripped him immediately, right? Uh, with that said, you know, um, they didn't want to give ben Devin Haney the benefit of the doubt. They put him champion in recess, the WBC did, which I think was wrong on so many levels. For what? It wasn't necessary. It's not necessary. He's already a champion. It's not necessary to place that uh, title on somebody else already, put the belt around somebody else's waist, and then he's immediately going to fight them, 
you know, uh, to regain it. What sense did that make? But anyway, that why 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 couldn't that just be uh, Javier Fortuna and Luke Campbell, the winner fights Devin Haney for the belt, and now if Devin Haney's not ready by the time that fight is over with, then you say okay we might have to look at other options. But why strip him immediately, right? We know why. So with that said, you know um, with that said, you know uh, as far as Javante Dink Davis versus uh, uh um. Uh, uh, Ryan Garcia <clears throat> I think that Jorge Linares Would give Ryan Garcia some Much needed experience uh, um, He would garner some much needed experience But I believe That Javante Tank Davis ex Explosive power His quickness um, His stature and his His ferocious nature Is going to help him defeat Ryan Garcia uh, I like Ryan Garcia. I like what he brings to the table. He made me a believer this last fight. You know, I thought he needed a lot more work. And, I, you know, it seems like he's growing into his physique. He's very tall for the division. Uh, I believe he's about 5'11". So he's very tall for the division. You know, uh, he's very fast hands. You know, um, so but you have to get uh, acclimated to fast hands coming back at you, right? And I think that Jorge Linares' southpaw stands and his ability to switch orthodox and southpaw, you know, uh, he's uh, more orthodox than southpaw, but, you know, he can switch if need be. He has very good foot movement. Uh, he's very fast, and he has respectable power. More importantly, he has high ring IQ, and he's a vet. He has the knowledge. He's been a champion. So what Jorge Linares brings to the table is going to help prepare Ryan Garcia for Javante Tank Davis. So that's a smart move. I just don't think he has the power of Javante Tank Davis. Well, I know Jorge Linares don't have the power of Javante Tank Davis. Even though uh, Javante Tank Davis didn't really display his power against Yoriokis Gamboa, in which I was very, very surprised. I thought that he was going to blow through Yoriokis Gamboa because Yoriokis Gamboa uh, hasn't had the best defense. He shows laps in his defense. Uh, he's very chinny. So I expected him to get blown out, especially when he uh, blew out his Achilles in the second or third round, and he was able to survive to the 12th round. Although he got stopped, I was just surprised that he even got to the 12th round, right? Um, and he wasn't trying to survive. He was still trying to fight back. So it's one thing when you get a vet in the ring and he's trying to survive. It's, it's difficult to, to stop him, you know, but he wasn't trying to survive. He was still trying to fight. You know, at the 12th round when he was uh, hurt and staggered, he was trying to um, survive and just beat beat the, you know, beat the, um, get to the bell, the last bell, but he wasn't able to do it. But for majority of the fight, he was fighting back. So, you know, but uh, uh, I think that Tank Davis, I don't think Ryan Garcia has seen anything like Tank Davis. And ne they haven't seen anything like each other all the way around, you know, uh, vice versa, right? Uh, he's going to be very, very tall, very, very fast. And if he has his, sticks his jab out there on, um, Javante Tank Davis, that could prove to be a problem for him. Uh, uh, I would love to see how Tank Davis, you know, deals with that jab. I think that that's going to prove to be a problem. More importantly, uh, Javante Tank Davis needs to be uh, disciplined and focused and locked in. And I think he will be. I don't think that, you know, uh, he go in this fight with Leo Santa Cruz or uh, Ryan Garcia taking them lightly. I hope he doesn't. You know, um, one thing jumps out at it, Drew, is that, you know, uh, the biggest fight in his career was Yoriokis Gamboa. He moved up to 135, and yet he still missed weight. You know, so that's that could be a problem, right? That just shows a lack of focus, a lack in focus, point blank and period. And Floyd Mayweather wasn't happy about that. Um, now, the, ro the biggest roadblock in this entire situation is going to be Floyd Mayweather. Is he willing to put... Uh, his cash cow in the ring with Ryan Garcia, not that he fears Ryan Garcia, but is he one to do that and help benefit also Oscar De La Hoya? See, Floyd Mayweather is not in the business of helping Oscar De La Hoya do anything. And that, I believe, is the biggest hurdle. I, I like the fact that Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia's father, Oscar De La Hoya, putting Javante Tank Davis and Floyd Mayweather on notice. And the fact that Javante Tank Davis is responding um, kind of puts him in a position with the fans and the boxing world as to say, why are you not taking this fight? It's going to put pressure on him, right? Floyd Mayweather is not going to put pressure on Floyd Mayweather because Floyd Mayweather is going to say, listen, I do what I want. He's been doing what he wants forever. 
currently he's not fighting. It's his fighter. And his fighter is Javante Tank Davis, who's saying he's willing to take these fights. And at some point in time, just like the Tevin Farmer fight that never came to fruition, uh, even though I thought he was going to beat Tevin Farmer, and I think he, Javante Tank Davis, I favor him to win these fights. But still in all, at the end of the day, you got to get in the ring and fight these fights. You're saying that you're willing to do it, then you're going to have to do it. Point blank and period, right? We can't, the fans are not going to continue to listen to Javante Tank Davis say, oh man, I'll dominate, I'll knock out Ryan Garcia, I'll knock out Devin Haney, I'll knock out uh, 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 Tevin Farmer. But these fights are not coming to fruition. At some point in time, at some point in his career, because Javante Tank Davis is 25 years of age. I know we like to continue to say how young he is in the sport, but he's 25. Uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are 21. And they seem to have more control in the direction of where they want to go in their careers than Javante Tank Davis does. And granted, we understand that Javante Tank Davis is the quote unquote cash cow of, and I'm going to say of this crop of fighters. Because the cash cows is Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence, Deontay Wilder, and uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez. No particular order. I'm just throwing them out there. Right? And then you go to Javante Tank Davis. Yes, he's a big star. Yes, he sold out in Atlanta. Yes, he's done that. But we have to see it consistently, you know, um, and on pay-per-view. We saw Canelo Alvarez on pay-per-view. We saw Deontay Wilder on pay-per-view. We saw Errol Spence on pay-per-view. We definitely saw Manny Pacquiao on pay-per-view. This fight with Leo Santa Cruz and Javante Tank Davis is going to be his first pay-per-view event. You understand? So they're telling us that he's the cash cow, but now we're going to have to see it. And see that uh, uh, the people actually, it's one thing to watch it for free and sell out arenas. It's another thing to get people to come out of their pockets to sit at home and pay for it. That's two different things. So, you know, uh, and Anthony Joshua is a pay-per-view uh, uh, superstar, right? Th those are the five cash cows. Errol Spence, uh, Deontay Wilder, Canelo Alvarez, Anthony Joshua, and Manny Pacquiao. No particular order. So they're telling us that he's a pay-per-view star. He's, you know, the next biggest thing, but we're going to have to see it. So with that said, you know, uh, we're going to have to need to see him in the ring with these opponents that he's continuously saying that he will knock them out. Like he's saying right now, why, why wait, make the fight happen? Okay, well, you got to tell that same thing. You have to utter the same sentiments to your promoter and Floyd Mayweather and uh, Mayweather Promotion CEO, Leonard Ellaby, and tell them, listen, this is the fight that I want. Obviously, they're going to they're looking to guide them in a certain direction to 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 capitalize uh, on the most revenue as possible. But still, in all, at the end of the day, you can't continue to say you're going to knock out Tevin Farmer. These guys are in and around your division and you're not fighting them, period. We we we, we understand the Leo Santa Cruz fight. Leo Santa Cruz is very accomplished. But Leo, again, Leo Santa Cruz is going to be more than likely moving up to 135. They haven't. uh uh um Announced the act, the weight that this fight is going to take place at, but more than likely it's going to be at 135. Leo Santa Cruz has never fought at 135. He's actually only fought at 130 one time, right? And he didn't look the greatest at 130. So again, you know, um, we're going to want to see Javante Tank Davis in there, and this is a big fight with Leo Santa Cruz that I expect Javante Tank Davis to win. I expect him to dominate Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz never met a punch he didn't like. He throws punches in bunches. He makes too many mistakes. He's very predictable, and you can't be that way uh, uh, with Javante Tank Davis. And he hasn't. Leo Santa Cruz hasn't been in the ring with as much big big punches as Uriokis Gamboa. So I don't even though Gamboa is chinny, uh, he hasn't been able to. Uh, see those type of punches, big punches in the ring with Leo Santa Cruz. So Leo Santa Cruz has seen nothing like Javante Tank Davis. So it's going to be a total shock. Um, Carl Frampton is not a big puncher like Javante Tank Davis. Yoriokas Gamboa was in the ring with Terrence Crawford. He's been in the ring with big punches. You understand? So he knows what it is to be in there with a big puncher. So he, him taking Javante Tank Davis punches coming up in weight wasn't a surprise. It was a surprise to me because he's chinny and with the explosiveness and the age of Yoriokas Scambo, I expected more from Tank Davis. But at the end of the day, I expect Javante Tank Davis to, you know, dominate and show and have a showcase fight against Leo Santa Cruz. But we want to see this Ryan Garcia and I favor Javante Tank Davis to beat Ryan Garcia. I favor him to beat uh Tevin Farmer. Uh 
But where's he going to go from this Leo Santa Cruz fight? We're going to want to see Teofimo Lopez. We're going to want to see Vasil Lomachenko. And again, I think that he'll dominate Vasil Lomachenko as well. Javante Tank Davis. A lot of people are going to disagree with me, but hey, that's just my opinion. But let's see how this all plays out. Let's see if Floyd Mayweather are actually willing to go to the negotiation table and do business with Asia De La Hoya. That's a big hurdle. But uh, that's all I got for y'all, man. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notification. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all, man. Peace.